In February 2020, I first downloaded a game engine called Unity. And here is my journey of working with Unity for one year. So pretty much 12 months ago, I downloaded Unity as I wanted to create more diverse games than I did in Game Maker, which was the engine I predominantly used before. But my only issue was that I didn't know C Sharp or literally anything about Unity. So I set myself a goal of creating an Argaria clone in a few weeks with no experience and not knowing where to start. Now remarkably over those weeks, I managed to do just that. With the help of Unity tutorials, the Unity documentation and other sources, I created my first Unity game. The mechanics of the game are pretty much like Agario, you can collect pellets which will increase the player's size, but to make it different I decided to implement AI instead of a multiplayer feature. I also didn't know how to make a multiplayer feature even if I wanted to. I made it so the player can shoot a gun, and when that happens their size decreases. After making this game I fell in love with Unity, purely because of the fun and easy things you can make. Also I freaking love post processing, which isn't a thing in Game Maker. This was the start of my Unity journey. Because I love the program so much, I started creating small little prototype games here and there. By no means were they full-fledged games, but they still give me the experience and knowledge I use today. The next tiny project I worked on was a hyper-casual game. The mechanics were super simple and the art too, and I managed to create this game in about a day or two. I never ended up releasing it, but it still helped me get better at Unity. Then on April 18th, 2020, I started creating a game that by far taught me the most about Unity. My Ludum Dare 46 submission, Skip a Beat. This was a game created in 72 hours under a given theme of Keep It Alive. I streamed a lot of the progress on my YouTube channel where I had viewers help me. The game was an endless runner with cutscenes and a lot of artistic features. The given time frame and the lack of knowledge forced me to learn quickly. I had to learn numerous new features and tips about Unity to get this finished. And after the exhausting 72 hours of straight up game development, I had a complete game. Now although the mechanics are super simple, this experience still taught me so much. Not only did I explore things that I've never tried, I also pushed myself far beyond what I hoped. For those wanting to play it, I'll leave a link down below. I created more games after this, and released numerous videos about them, such as a scrolling shooter game, where you control a rocket that has to destroy randomly generated enemies, to a geometry dash replica made in 24 hours that's supposedly super hard and impossible to even a clicker game that uses one colour. Over the few months of development, I realised that limiting myself to a theme or a time limit really helped me to become more creative and more skilled at Unity, and programming in general. The next big milestone in my development was my first ever mobile game, Citrus Intolerant, which was a game created, published and marketed in about two weeks with the help of my friend Avery. This was for both of us our first actual proper released game, it's essentially a procedurally generated 2D world where you the player has to try and get as far as possible without dying. The game features a full working shop system, player customization, and even ads as we need to secure that bread. We ended up releasing it on the Google Play Store for completely free and it's still up for anyone interested in playing it. Now before I show you the biggest project I've been working on, there's some honourable mentions of games I've made. Firstly, we have two of my games that were made with only particles. Yes, I know it sounds a little crazy, but let me explain. Essentially, I created two games where no sprites were used, but instead particle systems to emit things on the screen. I do have a full explanation in a video on how that worked, which I'll link down below. The first game was really simple. Essentially, there is a powerhouse in the middle of the screen that you have to protect. Enemies will try and move towards it to kill it, but your job is to kill the enemies before they reach this point, which is done by gaining momentum and launching yourself into the enemies. This was one of the few games where I experimented with 2D physics and I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was also great to make a game with a challenge. Then a few months later, I tried the challenge again, this time making a multiplayer game. Now generally speaking, this was my first actual proper multiplayer game, and I decided to use Mirror to do all the networking, which was new to me but fairly easy to set up. I once again used no sprites but instead particles for literally everything in the game. The game was like an arena fighting style game, essentially players can join and fight other players in a massive arena. Ammo and items are scattered around the map for the player to pick up. There is loads of different weapons such as a bomb launcher, rifles, freeze rays, and the game is also available for download if anyone's interested. This was also one of the first times I experimented with a full on weapon system where you can switch different weapons. 
Also, I'm super proud of the freeze rate as it actually does freeze the player for a set amount of time if you're hit by it. The biggest challenge of making this particular game was getting everything synced over the network. Because I was emitting everything via particles, there were some instances where not everything was synced, but nonetheless I'm super proud of the outcome. Another game I created that I'm super happy with the outcome is a card game, where you have to click randomly generated cards in descending order within a time limit. Though the idea is once again very simplistic and minimalistic, I'm happy with the amount of polish I managed to get into the game, and with the general aesthetic. I put a lot of effort of adding particles and sounds in certain areas to make the game feel a lot better, and I'm super proud of it because it's one of the games where I actually put a lot of effort into it. And just as another note, I also created a mind reading game a week ago, which is essentially a matching game that also turned out to be pretty sick. There is a video on my channel about that, so I don't really want to go into depth about it. Anyways, it's now time for me to show you my biggest project that I've been working on. And just as an FYI, I actually transformed this project into something else, but that's all explained in my recent devlog. Anyway, let me show you this game. So this big project that I've been working on had the temporary name of Project Jude. It was essentially a third person adventure story game with lots of combat involved. The player would be raised in the facility due to his special powers, but one day he escapes. And the goal of the game was to discover your past while not getting caught. There would be plenty of fight scenes and boss battles, as well as a progressive storyline with slow progression of the player's skills that could be improved. On the screen right now, I'm playing some footage from the game, but essentially the player could obviously run, jump around and do all of that basic stuff, but he would also be capable of climbing any surface which was really cool in my opinion. The climbing surfaces option took a really long time to program, but in the end I ended up having an outcome that I'm super proud of. He also had special powers like a dash and a ground punch ability which in all honesty were pretty simple to program, but getting them right and making them look good was the actual tough part. Plus there was plenty of other abilities that were in the game but they weren't actually fully completed as of the time. This was a super large idea that I had and I was really excited to work on it, but as mentioned, as of a recent devlog I am making the wise decision of switching it from third person to first person. More details about that once again in my previous devlog. But generally speaking, this is what I have right now, an FPS game where you can shoot around and that's basically it. So that was my one year journey of game development in Unity. There is plenty of other small projects and games that I didn't include in this video because I didn't have time, but what this video is meant to show is that you can genuinely get so much progress done in even a few months. You can literally go from not knowing C Sharp and Unity to being actually pretty decent at it in a few months. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed my one year Unity journey, make sure to leave a like and subscribe and join my Discord server. I also stream every Sunday on Twitch at the moment, so a follow would be appreciated. And I'll see you guys later. Bye! Finally, thank you to all my Patreons, I really appreciate it.